Okay, let's discuss how we can determine the sample size required in order to be within a certain error bound of our approximate integration. So in this example, we want to figure out what n should be used to guarantee that when we estimate this particular definite integral, definite integral we will be with accurate to within 0 0.01 using the midpoint rule, okay? So this 0 0.01 was the uh, error bound that we're trying to be within. When we see this what value of n, this means that we're trying to determine, you know, what is the sample size. And I guess it's important that we're using the midpoint rule because that will tell us which error bound formula we want to use. So the formula we want to use is the, uh, the one involving estimating the midpoint error. So that's going to be uh, E m, E sub m, and that error is bound by k times b minus a cubed divided by 24n squared. OK? So. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to find k. All right. And in order to find k, we definitely need to worry about um, bounding our second derivative. So our k should be the bound of the second derivative of f of x. And we're bounding it on some closed interval. We're bounding it on the closed interval 0, 1. And the way that I know that's the interval is because that's our region of integration for our definite integral 0 to 1. All right. So let's write down what our function is. Our function f of x is going to be the integrand, which was e to the x squared. We need to take a couple of derivatives. So the first derivative f prime of x is going to be, we have to use the chain rule. The derivative of the outside function, e to the something, is just e to the something. You keep the inside thing, you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So derivative of x squared is 2x. All right. Next, we need to calculate the second derivative. To do the second derivative, I need to use the product rule. So, uh, when I do the product rule, I need to take the derivative of the very first thing. The first function is what I'm calling e to the x squared. We just calculated what that was, so let's write that down. The derivative of the first function is just e to the x squared times 2x. We've got to multiply by the second function, which is 2x, and then add what we get when we take the derivative of the second function, the derivative of 2x is just 2, so let's put a 2 here, and then we want to keep the first function, which was the e to the x squared. Okay, so I see that I have a common factor. Um, I have a common factor of e to the x squared, and I have a common factor of 2. So let me factor that out of my second derivative. I'm going to have a 2 times e to the x squared. And what is it that remains? What remains is going to be, we still have a 2 in there. We still have two x's, so it's an x squared. And then from the second, second term, we just have a 1. We need to bound this derivative here. Uh, when I look at this guy, I see two pieces that involve x. I see one of those pieces is right here, and I see one of those pieces is right there. Okay, so uh, x squared on the interval from 0 to 1, that's going to be less than or equal to 1. And that's true as well for this guy. This part here is going to be less than or equal to 1. So that really makes uh, the whole thing over there, this whole thing is going to be less than or equal to e to the 1. Okay, so once I've bounded those parts, 
I think that we can see that this is going to be uh, really two times less than or equal to two times e, and then inside the square brackets we're going to have a three. So this whole part here is uh, less than or equal to six e. So this six e, this is going to be what I'm calling my k. All right, now it's time for us to uh, bound our midpoint approximation error. So we know that our midpoint approximation error is going to be less than or equal to 6e times 1 minus 0 cubed divided by 24n squared. And we really want this guy to be less than or equal to 0 0.01. So we're really going to take this inequality right here, and we're going to solve for n. Okay. So we're going to solve for n. So let's do that. So we're going to have 6e divided by 24n squared less than or equal to 0 0.01. I can multiply both sides by n squared. I'm going to get 6e divided by 24. That's going to be less than or equal to 0 0.01 n squared. I am going to divide both sides by um, 0.01. And that's the same thing as multiplying both sides by 100. So then we're going to have 600e over 24. And that should be less than or equal to n squared. So now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And when I take the square root of both sides, that's going to give me that uh, square root of 600e over 24 needs to be less than or equal to n. So when we calculate that out, uh, we basically get um, that this is approximately equal to uh, 8.24. So if we want to be accurate to within 0 0.01, we need to round up. So our answer is going to be n is equal to 9. Because if we only did 8, we would be just short. Okay. So this concludes our video on determining the sample size to be within a certain margin of error. Take care, everyone.